Hi, this is Dr. Stanley Kim again. Today, we will discuss testicular cancer. Testicular cancer is the cancer of a young man and it's highly curable. In this lecture, I will present how to take care of those patients for cure. Thank you for watching. Testicular cancer is the most common cancer in young men aged 15 to 35. There are two types, seminoma and the non-seminomatous germ cell tumors. The average age of seminoma patients is 40 years old, and the that of non-seminomatous germ cell tumor 30 years old, which is 10 years younger than seminoma patients. The instance is five-fold higher in white men than African Americans, and is highly curable. Men with history of cryptokitism have a much higher risk of testicular cancer, especially the undescended testis. But the descended one also has a high risk of testicular cancer. Patients usually present with painless swelling of one testicle, and sometimes they have a heavy sensation or discomfort. Please look at this picture. The testis is where the sperms and the testosterone are produced. The sperms are moved to epididymis, and through the vas deferens, it goes to the uh, uh, prostate where the prostate fluid is mixed with the sperm and ejaculated. When you see the testis in detail, you can see the seminiferous tubules, many convoluted tubules in which the sperms are produced and they, uh, those sperms are moved to the hilum, the red testis, and then again to the epididymis. Most testicular tumors are germ cell tumors, about that we're discussing here. Non-germ cell tumors, such as Leydig cell tumors or Tolly cell tumors, are rare. Among germ cell tumors, seminoma is the most common uh, tumor type of tumor, accounting for 50% of all. Pure seminoma doesn't produce beta HCG or alpha fetal protein of AFP, but if synthetotropoblastic giant cells are present, beta HCG may be mildly elevated. That's why we sometimes see positive HCG in some seminomas. Seminoma with a high alpha pyroprotein is considered as a mixed germ cell tumor and treated as a non-seminoma germ cell tumors. Pathologically, immunohistochemical stain for CKIT is positive in seminoma but negative in non-seminoma germ cell tumors. I want to alert you that Spermatic seminoma is a whole lot different from uh, classical seminoma. So now we use the term spermatocytic tumors. Spermatocytic tumor occurs in all ages, even in the elderly man, and has a good prognosis. Non-seminomatous germ cell tumors have a several uh, subtypes. Embry embryonal carcinoma, choriocarcinoma, yolk sac tumor, and the teratoma. Embryonal carcinoma is commonly mixed with other types. Please look at this mixed germ cell tumor. Embryonal carcinoma and the teratoma with or without seminoma. Embryonal carcinoma with the yolk sac tumor with or without seminoma. Embryonal carcinoma and the seminoma. It produces no alpha pyroprotein. So if alpha pyroprotein is a positive, then this embryonal carcinoma is mixed with yolk sac tumor because yolk sac tumor produces alpha pyroprotein. And the presence of synthetotropoblastic giant cells within embryonal carcinoma means the tumor will have a positive HCG. And the pathologically, embryonal carcinoma has CD30 positive. Yolk sac tumor occurs in young children, pubertal children. So uh, when it occurs in adults, usually mixed with other uh, type of germ cell tumor, it produces high alpha ferroprotein, but no beta HCG. Choriocarcinoma is the most aggressive 
but is rare. It produces high beta HCG but no alpha ferroprotein. It usually coexists with synthetotropoblast. That's why the beta HCG level is high in this type of uh, germ cell tumor. Ter ter teratoma is usually benign. It's a part of mixed germ cell tumor and often found after uh, chemotherapy at the metastatic sites. It does not produce alpha ferroprotein or beta HCG. So if it's alpha ferroprotein or beta HCG is positive, then it means this teratoma has a coexisting uh, other type of germ cell tumor. Any man having a firm, solid testicular mass must be considered as having testicular cancer until proven otherwise, and the needs prompt diagnosis and treatment. Ultrasound of scrotum is highly sensitive in detecting testicular tumor, but it may not distinguish seminoma from non-seminomatous germ cell tumors. Tumor markers beta HCG alpha fetoprotein and the LDH are used, and the alpha fetoprotein is elevated in majority of non-seminomatous germ cell tumor, but not in seminoma. Beta HCG also is elevated in majority of non-seminomatous germ cell tumors and about 20% of advanced seminoma, but never in pure seminoma. LDH is not specific, but it's useful in uh, following the patients after treatment. For imaging studies, CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis with contrast is the standard imaging study, but it may not be sensitive in detecting retroperitoneal lymph node metastasis because up to 40% false negative rate. MRI can be used instead of CT scan when you worry about too much radiation exposure. MRI scan of the brain is done if suspicious for brain metastasis. PET CT scan is not much better than CT scan in detecting metastatic disease, but uh, it is useful for evaluation of post-therapy residual mass uh, rather than uh, for initial staging. We like to know which condition can cause false positive beta HCG. Marijuana use. People who use marijuana often have an elevated beta HCG, but some studies said it doesn't, but we have to know about this. People who have low testosterone and the hypogonadism have a high level of beta HCG because uh, Low testosterone give a positive feedback to pituitary gland to stimulate the production of LH, luteinizing hormone. And this LH cross reacts with the beta HCG. And also after first cycle of chemotherapy, the cancer cells lies resulting in release of beta HCG. So beta HCG will be higher after the first treatment. And the very high beta HCG may cause hyperthyroidism because this beta HCG cross-reacts with the uh, TSH and the TSH stimulate the thyroid gland to produce more thyroid hormone. False positive AFB is seen in hepatocellular carcinoma, liver cirrhosis, hepatitis, and alcohol abuse. Before treatment, counseling about sperm bank needs to be done if patients want to preserve fertility, and they usually use the sperm freezing, cryopreservation in a liquid nitrogen like this. But about 50% of testicular cancer patients have some degree of underlying impairment of spermatogenesis, like a poor sperm quality. The quality may get even worse after orchiectomy of the affected testicles. And the study showed about a quarter of patients requested uh, to bank sperm. Luckily, 8% of patients recover spermatogenesis five years after diagnosis, and about 30 to 60% become father after treatment. 
To remove the uh, testicular cancer safely, inguinal orchiectomy is done. You don't cut the uh, scrotum to remove the testicular cancer because it can cause uh, cancer cell spillage, which is called scrotal violation. So to prevent the scrotal violation, the incision is made in the inguinal area, and the whole testicles with the uh, tumor is uh, pulled out by pulling that spermatic cord. And the spermatic cord will be ligated and cut at the uh, level of internal ring. Patients who present metastatic disease still need to have inguinal orchiectomy before chemotherapy unless chemotherapy is urgently needed. Then orchiectomy is done after chemotherapy. Testicular biopsy is not recommended because of potential cancer cell seeding. Contralateral testicular biopsy is usually not done unless it's the case of cryptokitism. Normalization of beta HCG is usually uh, occurs in two weeks and the uh, AFB level will be normalized in about four weeks. Then it means that all the localized tumor is eliminated. For staging, uh, TNM and the tumor marker staging, S staging is used. T1 means tumor limited to testis and the retted testis. T2 means tumor has lymphovascular invasion or tumor invade the uh, epididymis or uh, tunica albuginea. T3 means the tumor directly invades the spermatic cord subtissue. And the T4 means tumor invades the uh, scrotum. N1 means retroperitoneal lymph node metastasis, size uh, less than 2 cm. N2 means lymph node metastasis, size 2 to 5 cm. N3 more than 5 cm. M1 means distant metastasis. M1A, non-retroperitoneal lymph node or pulmonary metastasis. M1B means non-pulmonary visceral metastasis like a, the liver, brain, bone, etc. And uh, uh, S staging means S0, normal tumor markers, normal LDH, beta HCG, normal AFP. It's only after orchiectomy. S1 means LDH level is more than 1.5 times upper normal limit and the beta HCG uh, positive but less than 5,000 alpha fetoprotein less than 1,000. S2 means LDH 1.5 to 10 times upper normal limit beta HCG 5,000 to 50,000 alpha fetoprotein 10,000 to uh, 1,000 to 10,000. S3 is LDH more than 10 times upper normal limits and the beta HCG over 50,000 alpha fetoprotein over 10,000. So the stage zero is actually the tumor in situ. Stage one is a tumor still confined in the uh, testicles, a uh, scrotum. And uh, um, depending on the uh, tumor marker positivity, if it's a positive, uh, as stage one S. Stage 2 means tumor invades the uh, retroperitoneal lymph nodes and the stage 3 is, is a metastatic disease either to the lung or uh, distant uh, lymph node metastasis or brain, bone, etc. Now treatment of seminoma. Patients with a stage 1 seminoma has 85% cure rate with orchiectomy alone. So after orchiectomy, just surveillance with a CT scan, physical examination, and uh, tumor markers. But we use the carboplatin chemotherapy just the one time, which increased the cure rate to 95%. Some doctors advocate two cycles of carboplatin. And the radiation therapy is low dose, 20 gray to bilateral para-aortic and the unilateral pebble lymph nodes can be done, which gives 30, uh, 96% uh, cure rate. 
patients with stage 2a you know the stage 2a the metastasis to the retroperitoneal lymph nodes but size is less than two centimeter usually uh, treated with a chemotherapy BEP uh, three cycles or EP four cycles BEP means bleomycin etoposide and the cisplatin EP means just etoposide and the cisplatin because the bleomycin is a uh, toxic to the lung tissue so try to avoid the bleomycin then you have to give uh, more one more cycles without bleomycin and you can give radi radiation therapy to the uh, retroperitoneum and the pelvis in the stage 2b and the 2c is a, a bigger size retroperitoneal lymph node metastasis and and in this case chemotherapy is usually done it's the same as uh, stage 2a BEP uh, times three or EP times four. Stage three is a metastatic disease. When the patients have a good risk, like a only metastasis to the lung or retroperitoneal lymph nodes and the normal alpha protein, then uh, BEP times three and the EP times four. When the patients have an intermediate risk, which means metastasis beyond the lung or lymph nodes, so like a liver, a bone uh, or intestine etc and the normal alpha ferroprotein then uh, give a BP times 4 or BIP which include the iphosphamide uh, times 4. For seminoma there is no poor risk. I like to mention that for both seminoma and the non-seminomatous patients Dose reduction decreases survival rate. So full dose at scheduled time, regardless of white blood cell count, on day one of each cycle has to be given. But in case of febrile neutrophenia or sepsis, then a different story. Then you have to delay next cycle until recovered. For BEP, uh, granulocyte coloring stimulating factor like a nupogen are not indicated unless patient develop uh, febrile neutropenia then you start the uh, uh, nupogen at the next cycle but this uh, granulocyte colony stimulating factors indicate for VIP regimen except for stage one uh, seminoma when we give carboplatin times one or two cycles cisplatin must be used as carboplatin is associated with the decreased survival. Treatment of non-seminomatous germ cell tumor depends on the risk stratification of the tumors. In stage 1 and 2, the tumor confined uh, in the scrotum. When they have a no risk factor, which include lymph, no lymphovascular invasion, no predominance of embryonal carcinoma component, no T3 or T4, which means the tumor involves invades the spermatic cord or scrotum. If there is a no risk factor at all, then just active surveillance after the orchiectin. No chemotherapy, no surgery, no radiation therapy. But if the patients have a, more than one risk factors, then, uh, then patients may have a chemotherapy with a, a VP times one or even retroperitoneal lymphoid dissection. But because of 60% of patients never recur, then active surveillance is also another option. And you give a chemotherapy or surgery radiation if the tumor recurs later. Stage 1S, which means uh, positive uh, tumor markers, is considered as occult metastatic disease and treated as such with a chemotherapy, BEP times 3. Stage 2, which means tumor involved uh, metastasized to the retroperitoneal lymph nodes, usually need to have a retroperitoneal lymph node dissection. After the uh, uh, retroperitoneal lymph node dissection, if the residual lymph node tumor is less than um, uh, 2 cm or less, and the uh, number of lymph nodes uh, is less than four, then you just simply uh, watch 
with the active surveillance because early chemotherapy doesn't uh, improve the survival. But if the residual tumor size is over two centimeter or lymph nodes number uh, is over four, four or more, then you give a BP chemotherapy times two cycles. In the stage uh, 2B and C, which means it's more a bigger uh, lymph node metastasis in retroperitoneum, then you just go straight to chemotherapy BEP3 or EP number uh, four cycles. Stage 3 or metastatic disease, if it's a good risk, which means no metastasis beyond the lung or lymph nodes, or alpha fetal protein less than 1,000, beta HCG less than 5,000, LDH less than three times upper normal, then uh, BP uh, three cycles. But if the patients are older and are having poor lung function, then uh, you want to avoid the uh, bleomycin. So you give an EP for four cycles, which uh, gives 90% to your disease-free survival. When the patients have an intermediate risk, no metastasis beyond the lung or retroperitoneal lymph nodes, but alpha fetal protein is higher, like a 1,000 to 10,000, beta HCG 5,000 to 50,000, or LDH 3 to 10 times upper normal limits, then you give a one more cycle of BP. So BP times 4 or VIP times 4. You don't use the EP because too, uh, I, I would say it's a too mild for intermediate risk patients. And the poor risk, for example, mediastinal, germ cell tumor, or metastasis beyond the lung, or retroperitoneal lymph nodes, or alpha fetal protein is a higher than 10,000, beta HCG over 50,000, LDH over 10 times, 10 times upper normal limits, then you also give a chemotherapy, same as the intermediate risk patients, BP or BIP times 4. But their five-year uh, disease-free survival is lower than uh, intermediate risk. After chemotherapy, sometimes patients have a residual mass. In case of seminoma, if the size of the tumor is less than 3 cm, observation is recommended because 50% of those masses disappear in one year. If the size is 3 cm or larger, in which 30% of uh, case have a viable residual cancer, how do we know? We use PET CT scan. If it's negative, we assume it's a benign, so the observation is recommended. If it's a positive, surgical resection is done. But in this case, radiation therapy is not used because it doesn't benefit. If the patients have a non-seminomatous germ cell tumor, and if the size is less than uh, one centimeter or less uh, with the normal uh, tumor markers, then surveillance is recommended because about 80% of them are benign. If the size of residual mass is over one centimeter, then surgical resection is considered. If the tumor markers are persistent, elevated, but stable, not going up higher, then surveillance is recommended. Immediate surgery uh, is not better than surveillance and the delayed uh, surgery when the tumor recurs. If the tumor markers are gradually decreasing, then just wait until tumor markers are normalized. And if the still patients have a residual mass, then surgical resection is recommended. The resected tumor have a benign teratoma, then just observation. But if it has a viable non-seminomatous germ cell tumor, then second-line chemotherapy with a TIP, uh, Taxol, Ifosfamide, and uh, Cisplatin, or a VEL, uh, a VP is a Vimblastin, I phosphamide cisplatin for two cycle is recommended. But if the tumor markers are continuously rising, then second line chemotherapy with a TIP, a TIP, a VIP is used. Growing teratoma syndrome is interesting. The patients have a growing residual mass despite the decreasing or normalization of tumor markers. Usually CT scan uh, shows 
uh, cystic or and the necrotic elements inside the tumor. The treatment is surgical resection and patients have a good prognosis. When the patients have a metastatic disease, resection of those metastatic lesion can lead long-term survival. For example, for lung metastasis, after resection, five-year survival is 80%. Liver, for liver metastasis, if the size of uh, metastatic lesion is one centimeter or less, then simple observation recommended because mostly uh, those are necrotic tissues. If the size of liver metastatic lesion is bigger than one centimeter, then surgical resection is recommended. For brain metastasis, chemotherapy can be used because chemo drug cross blood brain barrier in case of metastasis. The chemotherapy uh, followed by surgery or stereotactic radio surgery for residual tumor. But after chemo, if the tumor is completely gone, then uh, observation without surgery. Or you can uh, do a surgery or stereotactic radiotherapy followed by chemotherapy. For mediastinal or retroperitoneal lymph node metastasis, uh, resection of those lesions lead a five-year survival about 90%. For the neck lymph node metastasis, neck dissection leads 90% of long-term survival. After treatment, patients need to have a follow-ups with uh, history and physical, including uh, testicular examination and uh, tumor markers with alpha fetal protein, beta HCG, LDH. For imaging studies, CT scan of abdomen, and pelvis, and chest X-ray are used. To avoid the radiation, you may use uh, MRI instead of CT scan. I like to mention that most of the testicular patients recur within two years after treatment. So you need to watch them closely for the first two years. For example, seminoma patients, when they have a stage one in surveillance, uh, HNP every three months for first year, every six months for second year, then uh, annually. But if they have a chemotherapy with a carboplatin or had a radiation therapy, then less often every six months for first two years, then uh, annually. CT scan is done annually for first three years. If the patients have a stage two or three after chemotherapy, then uh, those are a little bit higher risk of recurrence. So you will follow them every two months for the first year, and then every three months for the second year, and then every six months for third, fourth year, and then annually uh, after uh, year five. And the CT scan every three to four months for the first year, then every six to 12 months for second year, then annually. Chest x-ray every two months for first year, every three months for next second year, then uh, annually. For non-seminomatous uh, germ cell uh, tumors, for stage one uh, for surveillance, then the, you have to watch very closely. So HNP with the tumor markers every two months for first year, every three months for second year, then four to six months for the third year, thereafter annually. Then you do the CT scan every four to six months for the first year and every six months uh, next year, then annually, so on and on and on. As I mentioned in the previous slide, relapse and recurrence usually occur during the first two years after initial treatment. Late relapse, defined as relapse after first two years, is rare, occurring in one to, two, one to three percent of patients. And the pattern of metastasis relapse is quite characteristic. Usually patients have retroperitoneal lymph node metastasis first, then uh, lung and the mediastinal lymph node metastasis, then liver and bone, and etc. Usually patients have abnormal uh, tumor markers, beta HCG, AFP, LDH. Even with the seminoma patients, especially when they had chemotherapy previously, but Chemo-naive seminoma patients usually have a normal uh, tumor markers. LDH is not specific for uh, 
germ cell tumor relapse, as you know. Patients frequently have abnormal CT scan of abdomen and pelvis, chest x-ray, or CT chest, depending on the sites of metastasis. Biopsy confirmation is usually not necessary, but may be needed in certain situations, for example, when the patients uh, have a new mass, but normal uh, tumor markers. It may be other type of primary tumors. Then you need to have a biopsy confirmation. Treatment of chemo naive patients, just start the uh, uh, standard cisplatin chemotherapy, BEP, etc., depending on the risk of stratification. But when the patients have a relapse after initial chemotherapy, then second line chemotherapy is used, which include uh, TIP, Texel Ifosfamide, Cisplatin, or BEIP, high dose chemo followed by autologous stem cell transplantation, which leads long term uh, disease free survival. Immunotherapy with, a, for example, Pembrolizumab is uh, recommended if the tumor has PDL1 positive or DMMR MSH positive. So you have to request pathologist to run for this test for these biomarkers. Surgical resection is recommended for residual tumor if feasible because it improves the overall survival in non-seminomatous germ cell tumor. In seminoma, well, mostly chemotherapy is quite effective. Late relapse uh, tumors, mostly malignant, although 10 to 20 percent are teratoma. And then not every case have uh, abnormal tumor markers. On, uh, about 50 to 70 percent have uh, abnormal tumor markers. So how do you know? How do you know it's a uh, relapsed uh, tumor? Well, you need to do uh, imaging studies. But long-term surveillance CT is not uh, is controversial because of radiation exposure. If the patients have a platinum refractory disease, then you have to consider the high-dose chemo and autologous stem cell transplantation. But gemcitabine, peclitoxol, gemcitabine, oxaloplatin, and especially gemcitabine, peclitoxin, and oxaloplatin uh, gives pretty good objective, survival, objective response rate. We thank God that patients with a testicular cancer have a very good prognosis. The five-year survival of testicular cancer is 99% when they have a stage one, which means the tumor confined to scrotum. 96% in stage two, the tumor uh, metastasized to the retroperitoneal lymph nodes. And even 73%, uh, uh, even the tumor uh, spread to distant organs. This is the sunset of Hapuna Beach in Hawaii. Thank you for watching.